Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another bit of a tutorial for you and we're looking at cork bark again. Now in a previous cork bark hill tutorial, I'll throw a link up to it, yeah we looked at a simple embankment cutaway, yeah using a sliver and a couple of wedges of cork bark. Okay, now if you've never worked with cork bark before, I highly recommend you go check that video out because there's certain safety concerns over the mould and the fungus that's on it, yeah, and it needs to be cleaned and disinfected and, and handled properly, and that's all covered in that video, so go check that out. Okay, now in this video what we're going to be doing is sort of adding a few more techniques to make some more sort of craggier plateau hills rather than embar embankment hills. So what I've done is I've got basically a big sheet of cork bark like this, okay, and I've cut slivers in it, yeah, of varying sizes, yeah, as you can see. Okay, and the reason I've done that, okay, is if you actually look at the cork bark, yeah, you'll see that it's sort of, it isn't uniform, it, it's got these sort of creases, these almost like fault lines in them. Okay, and what this means is you can simply come along, yeah, and where these are, snap it quite easily. Okay, which means it's great for building up lots of little pieces. So what I've got is, I've got an absolute load over here. Yeah, let me grab them. Tons and tons. I've done a load. Yeah, so as you can I've got an absolute load. Oh, look, it's a hill. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Right, okay, and the idea is that because they're different heights, etc., yeah, we'll be able to get sort of a craggy, sort of up, sloping up sort of hill thing. You'll understand when I do it. Right, so the first thing I need to do is sort of work out a basic layout of where this cork bark is going to go on here. Now with the other hill we sort of did a, a simple line then we pulled the foam in, cut it all, shaped it all and it was fine. Now with this one we're going to be going round in a circle, building our cork up, then dropping our foam in on the inside. And the reason we're doing it that way is that whenever I've tried to do it, put, sort of cut the foam first and add the cork bark to it, it has involved so much fiddling and cutting bits out to get the cork bark to sit correctly that I've just found it's easier so lay your core bark out, fix that down and drop the polystyrene in. So what I'm going to do now is, oh one last quick thing, yeah, obviously I'm working with extruded foam so the highest sort of piece I've got at maximum is the height of my foam, okay, because I know because of the nature of this bark, yeah, I can't go higher than my level of foam because I need it to be flat on top, okay, but it varies from sort of half an inch all the way up to two inches. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab a few pieces now. Yeah, and basically just work my way around and work out, you know, where the slope's going to be, etc. So... Right guys, so there we have it. It's all loose. Yeah, but as you can see, it sort of slopes up from one side, sort of goes up. I might swap those round a little actually. But anyway, the idea is that the rock face, yeah, isn't uniform. It's not a smooth slope, so to speak. It's craggy. Yeah, and it goes all the way round. Now, obviously, this is a bit sort of unrealistic because the way we've cut it, we've got sort of a sharp edge along here, and that looks, it just doesn't look right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, yeah, a pair of long nose pliers. And we're just going to come along and we're going to break this edge up, this top edge. Yeah, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to bevel the edges. Oops, sorry about that, bit of a technical issue there. Uh, the SD card was full. Right guys, uh, as I was saying, yeah, I've used the uh, long nose pliers to sort of rip away that main edge and also bevel the piece. Okay, so if I compare it to that one, yeah, you can immediately see the difference. Yeah? Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with that process the whole way round. Right, which one came off? Was it that one or that one? I don't know. Oh, well, figure it. Right, I'm going to continue all the way round, guys.
Right, so that's all done now, and as you've seen, I've ripped lots and lots off the piece. And if I bring it up, yeah, you can see how it's lost that sort of sharp edge look to the pieces. Yeah, it's starting to look a lot more organic. Now, there are sort of rip tears, sort of ridge lines where it's ripped. And so what I'm going to do with those is, all I've got is a bit of 60 grit sandpaper on a sanding block. I'm just going to pick the bits up and just that one edge, yeah, just give them a quick rub over. Okay, I'm just sort of show you. Yeah, that's where it looks like right now. Yeah, and you can see that line right across there. Yeah, and if I come in... Yeah, and just do that, it completely changes it and just makes it a little bit more organic. Where, which is important because we want that blended rock look. Yeah, so the next job, yeah, is I've got to go round and watch it, just quickly sand the edges of these. And then very quickly what I'm going to do is I'm going to glow them down with my hot glue gun. Okay, so I'll crack on with that and it'll go fast forward or skip ahead or something. You know how it goes. So there we have it guys, it's all glued down now, it's all sanded and sort of beveled. And I know you can still see the sort of step effect, yeah, but it's not so marked now we sort of beveled, that one could do with coming, now I'll fix that, don't worry, yeah, but as you can see, helps if I look in the camera, doesn't it? Right, as part of the chipping process, you will have noted we, we have acquired quite a bit of this stuff, okay, which are the off cuts, the, the bits we've ripped off save those because what we're going to do is we're going to use those as the rocks to blend these edges and to make rock falls and that sort of stuff with it being exactly the same texture it works really well now the next thing i need to do yeah is to watch it put my foam on the inside okay now i know before we said you know i put it i, I do it this way because it's easier i know a few of you probably went i, I don't understand how that's easier if i did it as a block then as i was constantly doing these i'd have to take the block off cut it put it back down, make sure that was all right, and I wouldn't be able to glue anything down until everything was cut perfect and it would all be moving around. Doing it this way, yeah, I can line up my cork bark, yeah, and make sure it's exactly how I want it, and then just drop the foam in the middle. So how do, you know, now you could do a bit of a guessing game and say, so all right, I'll cut that bit and then I'll constantly cut it, but what I like to do, and this is a kitchen towel, okay? What I'm gonna do with the kitchen towel is, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, and push it in. Because I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. Yeah, and then what I'm going to do is very gently so I don't move the towel. Yeah. Just quickly skim around here. And this side. Yeah, don't move the towel. Yeah, it's okay, yeah, we're good. That comes down to about there, that comes down to about there. Yeah. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> Don't laugh. Okay, but what it allows me to do, yeah, is if I get my phone, which is here, and make it out of a mess here. Right, let's just do it quickly here. So, shut that off. <laughs> right. So there's my imprint of the inside that I've basically pushed down, drawn round once it was flat, and then all I'm going to do is just quickly check, is that big enough? Yeah, that's big enough. Pull that close to this edge. Yeah, it's pretty close to the edge. That's up to the edge there. Yeah, and then, yeah, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get, like, my long nose pliers or anything, really, but I'm just going to press in along here. Yeah, and then I just need to do around this corner here. Yeah, and lo and behold, by doing that and using that, I've managed to transfer, yeah, the sort of inside. Yeah, so when this is cut, that's going to drop straight in there. 
Yeah, and it should be a pretty good fit. So what I'm going to do now is, because this is obviously messy, I'm going to quickly take it outside. Yeah, cut this out, and I'll be back in a second, guys. So here's our watch collar, our insert. We're going to insert this, okay? So here's a gap that we've got to insert it in, and it goes in. And look at that. Okay, I've got to trim a little bit there, because I, I knew that was going to be over. But there you are, there's your insert, nice and easy. And it's just a lot easier than constantly having to fiddle around and what you call it, and sort of try and get it in and adjust everything, yeah. So, very quickly, I'm going to cut this off here. And then that corner there, just so I can glue this down. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so there's our insert. Yeah. I mean, you can see it's not in profile, but we can do that next. Yeah, the important thing we need to do now is just glue this down. And we, I'm going to use hot glue again. Yeah, and I'm going to smidge it out a bit because I want it to cool down. I don't want it to melt the polystyrene because when hot glue goes down with polystyrene, yeah, what it can do is if it's too hot, it can melt the, poly the heat and the of the hot glue will melt the polystyrene away from the glue. Yeah, so put that in. Give it a good wiggle, make sure it's nice and firm and deep in there. Yeah, and we're good. Okay, next job is we need to start profiling it down. Yeah, we're going to use a hot wire cutter for that. And all I'm going to do is basically sort of take off layers and bring it down. Right, there we go. So it's starting to take shape. Now you'll notice we've got these gaps here as well. Okay, now the way we're going to deal with the gaps is dead simple. Yeah, we're going to cut slivers off. And normally I've got a, a load of spare slivers because I'm working on a lot. Right now I'm just working on this one piece because I'm sort of redoing it because I, I shot this and everything went wrong. So I'm redoing and, and little Dave's getting an extra piece. So what I'm going to do is cut some custom slivers. Yeah, so sliver like that, Doo -doo. and all I'm looking to do is to wedge it into these sort of holes and fill these gaps because it'll be a lot easier to fill it with the polystyrene than it will be to fill it with the filler when we get to smoothing all this off. Yeah, to sort of fix it, yeah, PVA on both sides, and this is going to get messy. Yeah, and then simply just find places to wedge it in and just push it down. Yeah. Now don't worry about that little lip, okay? Because what we'll do is we'll come along with something like a steak knife or a sharp blade. Yeah, and just cut it off, bringing it in all nice and smooth again. Yeah, it's as simple as that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fill a few of these gaps. In fact, I might as well just cut them with my watch for it, steak knife. Right, so there we are guys, all sort of rough and ready. All the gaps, all the major gaps are filled. The rest will fill with filler. Yeah, and I did a little bit of carving. I just want to get a bit of sandpaper, smooth it out, and see if I can just take that ridge out of it as well. Oh, and I've also lost my step. I need to go back in. I need that step. Right, so sandpaper, and all I'm going to do is just gently Okay, so sand it down, there we go, and it's really starting to come together. Now, oh, let me get those little wisps. That's a DMG word. He's cotton, that one. Right, next job is our lovely filler. I'm going to make a hell of a mess here. Right, first thing. Yeah, so.
Yeah, the main aim we're going to do with fillet is obviously get all these gaps filled in. Yeah, and sort of disguise these ridges. In fact, very quickly, let's just take that edge off there. So guys, there we go, okay? It's not perfect, it doesn't have to be, okay? The main thing is you get covered up those major gaps, okay? Yeah, you'll notice I've also run it around the edge, yeah, it's just something I like to do. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Yeah, you still can tell certain places that are artificial, but remember we've still got to add a load of rocks onto this. And then even beyond that, you know, you've got your, your clump phologies, your grasses and all that sort of stuff as a way of disguising it. You'll also notice that I got a damp cloth. Yeah, and very quickly sort of went round the edges, just sort of smoothing them out. And also around these edges, get, just getting rid of these occasional blobs of filler that you get just, just on the rocks, just to help it make it a little... Little blobs don't look right as on rocks, if you know what I mean. So it helps make it look more realistic. But that's where we're at so far. Yeah? Right. Okay. I've got to leave this to dry now, so we'll come back when this is all dry, eh? So, guys, this is all dry now, and it's ready for texturing. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to texture it the same manner that we texture everything. But with the one slight change, yeah, as we mentioned earlier... We've got all our sort of offcuts, our rips, yeah, that we sort of took off it as we were sort of beveling the edges, etc. We're going to use those as our main rocks. So then what we're going to do is follow it on with a few standard rocks, smaller grit, fine grit, and then basing sand. Okay. So, key thing when you're working with this stuff. Yeah, and you're working it with it for rocks. If you want the small pieces, and obviously because they've been cut and we've ripped off the flat bits, they've got flat bits on them. So wherever possible, the flat bits go down. Yeah, and that will ensure that you have a nice rocky texture on the other side. Now, my glue of choice is obviously PVA. So the next thing I need to do is grab this chair, sit myself down, and get cracked on. So there we are guys, and immediately you can see how using the cork bark, yeah, to break up those areas which, you know, essentially looked a little bit dodgy. And what I mean by dodgy is where you could see sort of unnatural lines, the cuts in the polystyrene, the gaps in between the polystyrene and the balsa, and not the balsa wood, the what you call it, and the cork bark. Yeah. And all we've done is by using those offcuts, we've completely broken that up and sort of given this slope a really sort of jagged, rocky sort of approach. Yeah, and where it's kept the plateau and then just at that dip, yeah, we've dropped in a load more rocks just to sort of keep that so it doesn't look like a complete flat. Okay, now the next stage is obviously to cover this with, what shall it, grit and gravel and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to do that now. Obviously, starting with the largest, I'm going to use the larger bits to hide the sort of the last few spots where we need to sort of hide our unnatural lines.
And there we have it guys, it's all textured up now. Okay, I had a couple of little problems, it's that hot still, I mean it's midnight, well it's, it's half twelve now and it's still so hot that the glue is drying before I have time to put the grit down. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, here you go, have a better look at it. Now do you see how all those rocks have blended in? Yeah, you can hardly tell where any of the inorganic lines, the cut lines or anything like that are, yeah, but if there are any that come up once we paint it and we re-spot them, yeah, consider them like, you know, clump foliage bush placement indicators, you know, just hide it with the clump foliage, that'll be the next step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this overnight to properly dry so we can show it you properly tomorrow. Okay guys? So, yeah, I have no doubt it will dry very quickly, but I will see you in the morning. See you in the morning guys. Hey guys, it's morning, it's all dry, and it's a hell of a lot cooler now. Now, we've finished this off piece, essentially, yeah, and if I bring it up, you can see. Yeah, you can see how the beveling works, how the sanding sort of made that all natural. Tying in the cork bark as rubble, yeah, it really keeps that texture going, and, and it's lost that sort of plateau look to it, and it looks more like a craggy hill now. I'm particularly proud of that bit. I like that, I like that a lot. Yeah, so hopefully Dave's going to be really pleased with this. Now, I'm not going to take this piece any further today, other than, well, any further, other than sealing it. The reason being is that I'm working on a, a terrain set for Dave, yeah, and it's a Fenris sort of Space Wolf set. Okay, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building a few separate elements, and then I'll come back and sort of do the, the painting, the flocking, and the snow effects. All this one video is like how to do sort of Fenris theme terrain, flocking, etc. vid. So this is as far as I'm taking this one, but you will see it again, along with a few others that I'm working on it at the same time. Now, uh, I've, as always, yeah, I hope you found it useful, guys. Like I said, this is sort of an opportunity tutorial, you know, to show you a few more tips and sort of tricks with court bark to make more realistic rocks. And I've got to say, I do like it. It's rare I really love my own work, I'll be honest with you. But in this case, hell yeah. So, guys, as always, like it if you like it. Share if you know anyone who, you know, this would be useful to. Uh, what you call it? If you've got any questions, anything you'd like to add, any techniques, anything like that, or just want to say hi, throw it in the comments. I always answer my comments, guys. And as always, yeah, yeah. If you really, really like what I do and you want to give me a hand, check out the Patreon link and consider tipping me a book a month. Every little helps and helps me produce tutorials and things like this for this and getting better camera equipment. Of course, you don't have to because, as always, I'm going to carry on regardless because I just love it. Right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. I've just had a load of Sarissa buildings turn up. I'm working on about three projects at the same time <laughs> in this heat. I'm a glow for punishment. You have a cracking day and a cracking weekend, and I'll see you at uh, Sunday night live show. Have a good one, guys. Ta-da.